All right, so now is as good a time as any. We'll, we'll get started here. Uh, people will continue to fil filter and file in. <laughs> Luckily, we're doing this virtually, so there won't be much disruption. Um, but good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome and thank you for attending today's Storm Trap presentation of Stormwater Filtration Solutions. Uh, I'm going to try to keep this as lively as possible, which <laughs> is a challenge for us all these days. I'm, I'm currently sitting here with a gamer headset on I had to buy at the last second, so staring at a computer screen um, without much feedback from you all. But I'm I'm going to assume that all my jokes land, uh, and 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 you'll know that at least I'm having fun. So we'll keep moving that way. But today's presentation is really focused on solutions that storm trap territory managers that you're all used to dealing with, uh, really those solutions that they can act as a resource and sell from both our own product line as well as that through our partner, Hydro International. And the solutions we'll focus on today are storm trap sand filter designs, as well as Hydro International's upflow filter and stormscape biofilter. The case study shown will show how all of these solutions can be used on municipal infrastructure development and industrial projects. Uh, to introduce the starting lineup, if you will, uh, my, my name is Brett Holmes. I'll be the host of today's presentation. Um, my background, I hold a master's degree in civil engineering from the University of Maine. I'm a registered professional engineer in the state of Maine. And uh, this one's a mouthful, but a certified professional of stormwater quality with over 10 years of stormwater industry experience. Uh, the two guys doing the heavy lifting today will be Jeremy and Aaron. Uh, Jeremy is Jeremy Fink is the principal product development engineer at Hydro International. He has over 15 years of experience designing filter systems and has a degree in mechanical engineering as a jumbo from Tufts University. And then finally, Aaron Lowell, he's going to speak about our sand filter solutions. Aaron earned a civil engineering degree, although he's from Maine, from the University of New Hampshire, uh, a subpar hockey school compared to that of which I went to. Uh, and has worked in the stormwater industry for over 12 years. Uh, had to get my licks in, Aaron. So just a bit of housekeeping before we dive in here. Um, although you as attendees will all be muted today uh, during the presentation, we encourage you to really use this, this toolbar on the right that you'll see uh, on your GoToWebinar to ask any questions that pop into your head. Enter them at any time. We're going to be monitoring them. Uh, my main man, Ben Lydon at Hydro, is going to be uh, texting me over some that pop up so that we can address them at the end of the presentation. Uh, in addition to that, at the end of the presentation, there's going to be a survey. And really, uh, to entice you to fill that out, there's two things here. One, uh, it helps us get better. Uh, really, the, the survey helps us craft future webinars, really helps us track trends in the industry and see where we can continue to be innovative uh, to be a better resource to you. And then secondly, less more lesser importance uh is that we're, we'll put you into a drawing for an amazon gift card worth a hundred dollars the last thing to mention here is uh you'll also receive an email uh, from info at stormtrap.com tomorrow so keep an eye out for that if you don't see that at the end of the day uh look into your spam or clutter that's going to be how you can get your pdh certificate for those of you looking for uh, continuing education requirements So with the housekeeping completed, uh, here's a here's a just a preview of things to come for today. First, um, what we're going to do is just introduce the two companies, Stormtrap and Hydro International, uh, before we dive in, and a little bit about our product line, and then get right into the filters. So really, Stormtrap has its own suite of tension products and a little bit of water quality. Hydro is a very comprehensive water quality uh, company, and it, it made sense for us to partner together so that Stormtrap can be the main point of contact to supply you the full stormwater solution to meet all your challenges. Once we're done talking about our companies briefly, uh, I'll turn it over to Jeremy and Aaron, like I said earlier, to really dive into the filters. Jeremy's gonna talk about structural filters and green filters from the Hydro International product line, and then Aaron will talk about our sand filter solutions. And then finally, we'll wrap it up with a summary uh, and you'll see the survey as well. And if time permits, we'll get to the Q&A. So a bit about Stormtrap as a company. Uh, we're a stormwater company focused on providing the full stormwater solution for every challenge. Uh, we were born out of a precast concrete manufacturer in the Chicagoland area. And we really started by focusing on that volume control, that, that um, retention detention, if you will, uh, as well as these sand filters that we're gonna talk about today and wet ponds on, on the treatment side. 
really since then we've grown in product solutions through development acquisition and partnership of water quality focused products to really get to that full stormwater solution like we said before as a company, we're much more than a product manufacturer due to our team of regionally focused sales and support team members. This allows the team to know the regulatory landscape of their territory, know the common challenges, and know which solutions apply to the challenges, whether that's something that Stormtrap has in their product suite alone or one of our partners like Hydra International, of course. And because of that, as you'll see, we really do have that full suite of products, as well as the experts that Stormwater Challenge municipalities, engineers, owners, and developers turn to first whenever they're going through their collaborative design process. Let's talk a bit, a bit about the products. Really, we'll start with the flagship product, uh, if you will, single trap and double trap, and the configurations that they can be used. Uh, and the first most common that we see is that retention detention. What you see here is really a single trap on a stone base for an infiltration design, allowing the water to seep into the native soils. We can also make that a concrete base, or use our double trap like you see in this treatment picture to be more of a, a detention as well. In addition to that, we can make the systems watertight. That might be an application like a sand filter or where you're trying to either keep groundwater that's above the invert out of the system, uh, not allow any water to seep out due to something like contaminated soils uh, or even water reuse. So capture the water and reuse it for irrigation, toilet flushing or other gray water applications. Um, in addition to that, you see with grass above the system, we can we can uh, work in conjunction with perme permeable surfaces over top. That can be grass itself. It can be uh, permeable asphalt, permeable concrete, or even uh, those permeable pavers that you see as well, as, as well as biofiltration swales. Talking about the treatment here that you see in the middle, um, Aaron will really dive deep into that, but we, we can configure these to be sand filters as well as wet ponds to really target that fine uh, sediment or nutrient. We can also put in simple weirs and baffles to target sediment and oils and greases. And we can even put in our netting system to capture trash. And because we have this product as well as the products we're gonna talk about today, we can really give that full stormwater solution, whether it be something like pretreatment in a hydrodynamic separator, uh, detention, filtration, water reuse, or anything in, in between that. It really is the full stormwater solution uh, that you get when you, when you look at all the companies combined that we'll talk about today. So before I turn it over to Jeremy to talk about Hydro's company and their products, uh, I did want to touch on our water quality products, which we're not going to talk a lot about today. But but if there's interest, reach out to our TMs or even let us know if you want to further information on a future webinar. But really here, here's the suite of the water quality products that we have at Stormtrap. And the first that you see on the left here is the site saver. And if you're used to seeing a water quality unit or a hydrodynamic separator, uh, which this is, you're probably used to seeing a swirl. Instead of that swirl, we're using inclined plates in a net. And what we're, what we're really targeting here is not only trash, but sediment uh, that you can see coming up the bottom, of course, as well as capturing oils and greases. Uh, the site saver does have NJCAT verification and NJDEP certification, as well as many other local regulatory approvals around the US, uh, making it usable really everywhere. Our trash trap system in the middle, you can see that's really targeted towards capturing trash. And where we see this used is a lot of municipalities where they're having issues with their infrastructure, allowing trash to get in and then going out to their rivers, lakes, and streams. Uh, these allow you to capture it in one point, whether in line, out of sight, or at the end of pipe, and, and maintain that quickly. We also see a lot of MS4 projects where they have a TMDL for trash, where we employ this as well. And then lastly, the pump guard, another net configuration that we have. This is gonna be more of a wastewater treatment plan application. This is, as my, my main man, Dan Feynman says, internal at Stormtrap, this is uh, inexpensive insurance for the pump. So really what you see is a grinder that's grinding everything up in these applications so that it can go through the pump and the pump can process it. A lot, what happens a lot is things reweave and, and cause the pump to fail, shutting down the wastewater treatment plant. This is an inexpensive way to protect that pump. Um, and so you see that we have detention, we have this water quality suite, but Stormtrap does recognize that Hydro International and the company that they are have better solutions and expertise in certain situations including but not limited to the filter systems that they're gonna to discuss today. For this reason, Stormtrap partnering and acting as the main point of contact for all the products that we'll talk about today 
with Hydro International is to, to sell and support these is a perfect fit. So with that, I'll stop talking. I'll hand it over to Jeremy Fink. Uh, he's gonna introduce you to Hydro as a company, uh, as well as their filter solutions. Go ahead, Jeremy. Thanks so much, Brett. Let's see. So just a few words about Hydro International for those of you who maybe haven't met us before. Um, Hydro isn't just international in name. Uh, we have offices and installations all around the world. Um, I'm based out of an East Coast office in Portland, Maine. We have a West Coast office uh, outside of Portland, Oregon, offices in England, offices in Europe, uh, office in Dubai for the Middle East market. And um, what I like to emphasize with that is by having this global reach, we're able to see and understand water quality challenges around the world and the best of the solutions from around the world and bring them to the markets that we serve. So uh, we have this, this broad experience and we make it local. Where, as you can see in this photo in the lower left, we're very fortunate to have our own full-scale hydraulics laboratory within Hydro. And this is where we design and test new equipment um, for stormwater treatment. This is a really unique uh, feature for equipment manufacturers. Often you won't see a laboratory like this outside of a university or um, there are a few commercial labs that do uh, testing and research. So to have, um, to have our own laboratory where we can explore uh, solutions on our own is a real benefit uh, for our product development. The line of products that Hydro has developed covers the spectrum of the pollutants that water treatment regulations target. So everywhere from sort of gross pollutants like trash and, and very heavy grits to very fine sediment and uh, dissolved pollutants. Um, although there are products on the market that claim to do it all, we feel that we can best help our clients get the results that they need when we match a product that is specific to their uh, local regulatory requirements. So here's a, a poll. What we're going to be talking about today are filter products, stormwater filter products. Um, and uh, ben, maybe you can launch the poll. The question is, how often do you see filtration projects in your area? Do you see them frequently, occasionally, hardly ever? Let's get a, a sense of who's in the audience. You should see the poll up now. We'll give it a few seconds for people to register their votes. Oh, so it looks like a pretty even split in the audience. Um, about a third, well, let me say, let's say 60%, two thirds of the audience sees them frequently or now and then. Um, another, let's say 20%, are uh, seeing an increase, and then another 20% don't see them very often. So this will this will be uh, useful for that. For will be useful for all of these groups. Um, it's good to it's it's a good piece of information here. So let's get into the nitty gritty about filtration. The product that I'm going to talk about most today is Hydro's Upflow Filter. And the Upflow Filter is really a family of products that can be adapted to fit the specific needs of the site and the regulatory conditions where it's going to be installed. Um, there are a range of configurations and media types that uh, make up the Upflow Filter family. 
Um, and along with that range of configurations comes a whole different list of regulatory approvals. Um, the upflow filter has configurations approved by New Jersey DEP, Washington DOE, Florida DEP, Virginia DOT, Canada ETV. Um, so the odds are whatever the regulatory environment is that you are viewing from, there's an upflow filter that will fit your needs. The one that's shown here is the newest version. This is the upflow filter EMC. EMC stands for extended maintenance cartridge. And this particular version is really made for um, uh, sites that are seeing a lot of material come off of them. And we want to extend the maintenance period requiring less maintenance for this site. There's a, a, backwash filter, a backwash feature built into the cartridge uh, for each one of these cartridges. And at the end of each storm, uh, the water backwashes through the filter and uh, cleans it off and gets it ready for the next storm. So it extends the, the media life. But to further explore some of the media options in the upflow filter, these are these are two others. Um, they they roughly break into two categories. There's media filtration and there's membrane filtration. The media filter is uh, supplied in media packs that go into the filter cartridges for the upflow filter. Um, filter media is great. It is uh, inexpensive. Um, has uh, low maintenance requirements. There's two different versions here. This one, the darker one on the left, is called CPZ, and that stands for carbon, peat, and zeolite. Uh, it's a good all-around filter material. The one on the right is regular old filter sand, a little less expensive. Um, for finer filtration, we recommend using what we call uh, membrane filter ribbons, and this is shown here. These, these membrane filter ribbons have been demonstrated by the NJCAT uh, test protocol to filter down to around eight microns. But of course, the trade-off is uh, if you're filtering all of that fine material out, you need to do a little more maintenance than you might with um, filter media bags. So it's a matter of picking the right tool for the job. The upflow filters pedigree stretches back about 20 years. Um, Hydro International bought the intellectual property from Dr. Bob Pitt, who um, you, you might have seen Dr. Pitt present at industry conferences, um, civil engineering conferences. Uh, he was um, a professor at the University of Alabama for a very long time. He developed this um, system for the EPA directly. And this, is a, this chart kind of shows a peek behind his development process as he was selecting what materials were, was going to be put into the uh, filter media. So here he was selecting peat and carbon and zeolite for the CPZ media that was commercialized by Hydro. So we like to think that we continue that spirit of research as we've gone ahead and commercialized the upflow filter. And I'm going to give three different examples of how we do that. Um, the first is represented by this picture on the left. Um, we have a uh, a testing program that synthesizes dozens of real-world water samples and runs them through test columns, pilot installations, and full-scale uh, commercial installations to provide us some real-world understanding of the performance that we can expect from the upflow filter. Um, laboratory testing can only get you so far. We really want to see what actual stormwater does when passed through CPZ media and uh, uh, filter ribbons and, and the rest of the hydro, uh, upflow filter media choices. So um, people send us, they take samples from their field sites, send them to us in our Portland main lab, or we send a pilot unit to them uh, and, and do that testing uh, on, on site. So this really informs our understanding of the performance. 
Secondly, Hydro International has our own maintenance division for uh, maintaining both hydrodynamic separators and, and filter products. And as such, um, we get information from the maintenance division passed back to product development uh, on every visit that they that they uh, conduct. So information about access, information about maintenance, information about um, uh, occlusion, all of this, all of this gets passed back and that is fed back into the process and is addressed in the next revision of the product. And finally, we've recently started including water level sensors, telemetry units within the upflow filter installations. While our maintenance division can feed us back information on their quarterly visits or monthly visits or annual visits, we get real time continuous information from the data loggers, which allows us a whole different level of understanding about filter performance and maintenance than we had before. So all of this information makes uh, our revisions of the product better, makes our installations of the product better. Sizing methods for stormwater filtration BMPs vary widely from state to state, sometimes even from city to city. Um, some regulations, uh, like in New Jersey, are really focused on fine TSS removal, while others, um, such as in Virginia, focus on nutrient removal. Uh, industrial permits will often focus on metals removal. So. Um, it, it, it varies widely, but regardless of where your project is located, it's likely that there is an upflow filter configuration that will have an approved uh, an approved version that will meet your regulatory needs. So I'm going to go into detail on a couple of different case studies here. Um, the first one is was in reference to an industrial permit. Uh, the majority of our installations are development-based installations, sort of municipal, commercial um, filter installations. But uh, I like to emphasize a industrial uh, case study for a couple of reasons. Um, one, the conditions in some of these industrial sites are really brutal, and they sort of uh, give us a torture test of what the filter can withstand. Secondly, be, the conditions of industrial permits require that you go out and test them quarterly. And so this is an ongoing project for us where we are cons consistently reevaluating the performance of the filter and um, making any adjustments that, that, that need to be made. So. Um, it's a, it's a great example of if it's working here, it works anywhere. Um, this is a, some pictures of the Port of Tacoma. Uh, they had a super fun site from the 80s with a mandate to clean it up by the year 2014. They selected the upflow filter as a product uh, to help them do that. They selected CPZ media, although they liked the idea that they could switch between CPZ and sand. This kind of gives you an idea of how dirty the site is. Um, this is a filter bag just about ready to go in, and these are the filter bags that came out, so removing a lot of material. Um, this case study, if you want a little more detail on it, is, is on our website. Um, but just in general, they selected to install five volts for a, a, a total of 133 filter modules. At this site, uh, they saw um, in their effluent testing, they saw a 75% reduction of TSS and turbidity, 60% removal of zinc. These were both pollutants of concern that needed to be removed at this site. So like I said, this site is still being monitored. It's still being maintained. Um, and, and the client is still happy with the performance of this, of this installation. Another type of installation that we see quite often are, is uh, projects at airports. And this is an example of one at Dane County, so um, uh, Madison, Wisconsin area. 
um, the airport was going through an expansion and as such needed to expand their stormwater facilities as well. The problem was that their stormwater facility was a stormwater pond. And if they were to extend it much further, they would start attracting waterfowl that would uh, interfere with planes. You don't want big birds flying around with your planes in your airspace. So they had to take this their stormwater um, facility and move some of it underground. They selected the upflow filter for a couple of reasons. One, the high rate uh, filtration system had a smaller footprint and a lower capital cost than the other proprietary stormwater filters that they uh, considered. Also, the upflow filter had uh, a lower head loss and hydraulic drop than the other filters that considered. And this allowed it to have an easier fit into an existing drainage profile that needed um, retrofitting. Additionally, and I'll, I'll once again, this um, this, let me go back a slide here. Once again, this case study is on Hydro's website. Um, they had their own maintenance division. And so the idea that they could maintain this filter on their own was a way that they could uh, keep their cost of ownership down. So they, they liked that as well. So the, the success of this project sort of adds to a whole suite of uh, airport installations that Hydro has with, with similar restrictions. And you can get a little more information about that on Hydro's website. So just a few tips and tricks for designing with the upflow filter. The upflow filter is convenient for a few different reasons. One, um, when it's delivered, it has both the filter and an offline bypass installed within one precast structure. And to give you an idea of how that works, I'll see if these arrows pop up, and they do. So during uh, normal treatment flow rates, you'd have water entering the system here through this inlet pipe. Uh, there's a diversion weir in, in the system here. So the water would enter the filtration bay, go through the filtration bay, be filtered, exit through the downstream side of this um, diversion chamber at the, at the front of the, of the precast structure. However, when the storm becomes, uh, the storm intensity becomes higher and now you're no longer at your water quality flow rate, the system can bypass without going through the the, without going through the filter um, bay at all, bypass entirely externally and leave the system. So this is a really convenient uh, way to install a filter. Uh, additionally, um, the system has multiple cover openings for easy access for maintenance. There's uh, no, it can handle a zero drop pipe installation. So you can have flat pipes in and out. Uh, also useful for low head installations. No equipment is required for maintenance, as I mentioned. So you can uh, get in there and maintain it with your own, uh, your own public works equipment. Here's one example of how the hydro upflow filter equipment and the storm trap storage chambers work so well together. Um, there's a trade-off between the size of your filter and the size of your storage system. So for example, in this case, you may have a water quality treatment flow rate that you need to filter, and you can size your filter based on that flow rate. And flow can come in, um, be uh, controlled by a flow control. In this case, this is a, a vortex flow control. Pass on to your filtration system, be filtered, and um, head, head out to the discharge. Now, flows beyond that water quality flow rate can be backed up and stored within this uh, the storage system. And so now, that as the storm begins to subside, this can back back out of the storage system and that will be filtered as well. So in this way, you can downsize your filter system 
and store the peaks of your storm within your offline or online storage system. So storm trap here. Uh, this is a great example of, of sort of the synergy between the hydro filter systems and the storm trap storage systems. So even though this looks like a very tidy application, I'll give an example of what it looks like on a plan. Sometimes it's not quite so tidy, but it works nonetheless. This is what it looks like when it's actually installed. Here's an elevation of a particular site. And you look at this and it's a little hard to see what's going on. The flow is coming down through uh, a pipe here, going to the entrance to a storage system and out through here. And so just to highlight those parts, this pretreatment at the, at the front of the storage, just make sure that no trash or very uh, heavy set of little solids will find their way into the storage system. It's kind of pretreatment for the storage system. The storm trap detention system is shown here. And finally, a water quality filter. In this case, uh, the upflow filter would be at the, at the discharge. Um, so the, the filter can be sized to treat the 80% storm, but you know that the entire storm is going to be filtered eventually as the peak of the storm is, is uh, stored in the storage upstream. This is a view of what it all looks like actually laid out in a contractor's yard ready to install. Um, by purchasing the full stormwater solution on this project from StormTrap, the contractor was able to coordinate the delivery of all the components. He was able to get the hydrodynamic separator unit, the filter system, the storm trap detention system, all at one uh, delivery. So this, this not only allowed for an efficient order process, but it allowed the contractor to coordinate with one person at storm trap. And that way the contractor could excavate the entire envelope and then install the systems rapidly, one right after the other. So in this site, uh, the contractor installed the two water quality units on the same day, started um, installing the storm trap, 124 pieces of a storm trap system on the following day, and uh, the pieces kept arriving and he could just continue uh, his installation, uh, coordinating it with one storm trap uh, project manager. There's another kind of filter that you may see required by your local regulations, and that is um, a green uh, infrastructure type filter or an LID uh, type filter. And these are sometimes called bioretention systems. You'll sometimes see them referred to as a tree in a box. Um, this is an example of, of one. This is Hydro's version of a tree in a box. It's called the Stormscape. Um, this product was just uh, recently approved for use as green infrastructure by the New Jersey DEP. Um, proprietary systems go to uh, approval agencies like New Jersey to be approved for use with higher loading rates than sort of generic tree in a box systems or generic bioretention systems. These can be used at higher loading rates. Uh, Hydro's version, as you can see here, skips the box entirely. It's a tree in a box without a box. We do that for a, a couple of different reasons. One, this open base here won't restrict root growth at all. There's some anecdotal evidence that the roots within uh, typical tree boxes can get bound up by the tree, by the uh, concrete box, I mean, and uh, this allows the roots to propagate out into native soils and makes for a healthier plant. Um, additionally, uh, th this system has full contact between the engineered media within the stormscape and the native soils. And that full contact allows uh, more infiltration into the system and thereby reducing the runoff that the, the system would, uh, that the site would see. Um, it can be installed in a lot of different modular 
ways sort of here it's a it's a modular system that nests together it can be installed with a plant or if the streetscape that it's being installed on um, has would be better suited for a bike rack or a, a banner or something like this it can be provided that way as well and it's a it's a really sort of simple lightweight modular system that people put in here, you can see it being installed by a landscaping crew. So it can be installed at that phase of a project uh, very, very easily by um, no heavy equipment and, and uh, grounds, grounds crews essentially. So um, with that, you know that that sort of sums up a little bit of a, a view about proprietary filters that that uh, Hydro provides through their partnership with Stormtrap. And now Aaron's going to talk about uh, sand filters, which is a a, a, a broader accepted solution. Um, Aaron, you can get into some detail on that. Thank you, Jeremy. Hi, I'm Aaron Lowell, the Stormtrap Territory Manager for the Carolinas. I'm in the Charlotte area. Today, I'm going to talk to you about underground sand filters. The rendering on the left shows a very generic example of a sand filter. However, there are many ways these systems can be designed. Sand filters are used frequently across the country and are approved for use in many locations and even listed in many state stormwater management handbooks as an approved BMP. So why should a civil engineer design a sand filter? Maybe the soil conditions do not allow for infiltration. This is the case in much of the southeast region, where the urban areas frequently encounter clay and silt soils. Or maybe the land value is so high that an above ground system is not feasible. A sand filter is a proven solution and can remove various types of pollutants, including sediment, hydrocarbons, and metals. Sand filters can be designed as part of a treatment train. As an example, a sand filter can treat stormwater before it's reused for rainwater harvesting. Applications could include gray water inside a building, irrigation, or vehicle washing. Sand filter design requirements can vary by city, county, and state. Many jurisdictions require treatment of the one inch water quality volume, which can be calculated using the simple method. Some allow a 25% reduction in volume as the sand filter will be operating continuously throughout the storm event. The size of the sand filter area is a function of the water quality volume divided by the ponding depth. Some jurisdictions set a maximum ponding depth height an example would be six feet in North Carolina. The general layout of the system is as follows. Stormwater enters into a sedimentation chamber. It's also known as a forebay or pretreatment area. Engineers use a couple different terms for this chamber. Water then spills over a vertical concrete wall into the sand filter area where the water quality volume is forced by gravity to flow through the sand and into the PVC under drain piping. Occasionally, flow attenuation volume can be counted in the water quality chambers if the water is counted above the water quality volume elevation. We've got a few case studies. The US Bank Stadium was part of a larger $400 million redevelopment effort called Downtown East, which included five underground storm trap sand filter vaults. The largest of the five is the one for the West Plaza of the stadium. Stormtrap worked with the civil engineer Rhonda Pierce of Pierce Peeney and Associates and the developer Ryan Companies to identify solutions. The site had many challenges. Since more than one acre of land was being disturbed by the project, a stormwater management system was required to filter the runoff before connecting to the city storm system. The project was located in a downtown setting with 100% impervious surfaces. It was also located in an area with limited depth to provide volume storage and treatment. It was very shallow, hence why you can see the four foot six vault inside height on the slide. Another design constraint was that the system was located in, an, in a plaza area and the client did not want too many manhole access openings uh, visible for aesthetics reasons. The sand filter modules were designed for fire truck outrigger loading with 18 inches of earth cover. This required 7,000 PSI concrete, which is 1,000 PSI higher than standard storm trap modules. One of the biggest challenges for the site was logistics. 
there were four other major projects going on adjacent to or on the project. The project had a tight construction timeline due to a hard opening date for the stadium. Another thing that was custom about the system was the shape. Custom geometry was needed to accommodate lamp pole base foundations. The project team considered other solutions, including cast in place and box culvert. The storm trap sand filter was selected due to ease of maintenance, a footprint advantage, and being able to fit the water quality volume in the smallest possible space. And I encourage everybody on the webinar to visit YouTube, type storm trap, to view a quick time-lapse video of the sand filter installation. The Orange United Methodist Church has been in existence for over 180 years. The church had grown exponentially and needed to expand their buildings and parking lot to accommodate their growing congregation. The church worked with Patrick Morrow at Philip Post and Associates, which is now Pannoni in Chapel Hill, the civil engineer for the project. After considering different options, including an above ground pond, a storm trap sand filter and detention system was selected due to its streamlined design which met the NCDEQ water quality and attenuation requirements for the entire site. Some of the challenges for this project, the church had long-term plans for growth. They decided to handle all of the stormwater infrastructure for their plans far in advance of the future building construction. Also, the system was required to be watertight. A pond liner was provided around the water quality portion to prevent captured pollutants from escaping under the system. The photo on the left is a perfect example to describe how a sand filter functions. First, all inlet pipes are directed to a sedimentation chamber to remove bulk sediment. The sediment chamber is typically separated from the sand filter chamber by a three foot tall baffle called a knee wall. Water overtops this wall and infiltrates through the sand media and then exits through the PVC under drain pipes. The treated runoff is then conveyed to the outlet control structure and sent downstream. Peak storm flows also enter the sediment chamber and can bypass via small openings in the precast near the top of the structure. These openings are visible on the photo to the left. If you look at my cursor here, you can see a little bit of a shadow. The elevation of the openings is equal to the water quality volume elevation, guaranteeing the required volume is filtered. The system consists of 194 modules and the entire installation process took three days, including setting up the storm trap pieces and assembling the sand filter. The sand filter chamber area was 1720 square feet, including the four bay. The detention and outlet control portion of the system is where the top pieces have been set. So the very back portion of the system up here. The photo on the right shows the completed system before backfilling. So it's very common for storm trap to incorporate four chambers all in the same box, the sedimentation, the sand filter, the outlet control structure, and the detention. The city of Wilson had an old and undersized stormwater infrastructure in the downtown area that was prone to flooding during high intensity rain events. The city had looked at the cost to upgrade the current system. The costs were extremely high due to the amount of pipe, number of new structures that would have been required and other utility conflicts in the area. A parking lot was identified as an area to provide a solution to these problems. Storm trap was contacted by Noah Parsons the City of Wilson Stormwater Compliance Specialist, and Robert Bartlett of Bartlett Engineering and Surveying to identify a cost-effective solution to the problem versus replacing the existing system. A storm trap sand filter and detention vault were selected as a goal for the project was not only to reduce peak flows, but also improve water quality. Storm trap was selected over other products due to the ability to make water tight, the long-term design service life of concrete, and the ability to fit a lot of water in a small amount of space. No other products could fit. The biggest challenge for the project was a compressed timeline to tear out the existing parking lot, install the storm trap structure, and repave the lot. Other challenges included poor soils, excessive rainfall during construction, and a high water table that was five feet below grade. This snapshot shows the unique layout of the system. Water entered on the far right-hand side via a 36-inch RCP, and flows were reduced so much that the outlet pipe could be half that diameter, 18-inch RCP. The sand filter featured 36 feet of overflow weir, separating the sediment chamber from the sand filter. 
This was accomplished by providing 18 two foot wide openings in the storm trap module's interior legs. The detention system wrapped around the sand filter chamber, eventually making its way to the internal outlet control structure. So if you look on the very bottom of this snapshot, the detention system continued all the way around this corner and then up all the way to the outlet control structure. The storm trap system was assembled in about six days. The storm water was discharged from the sand filter structure to a municipal storm sewer. The total time frame from existing parking lot demolition to completion of curb and gutter was about six to seven weeks. This concludes the case studies. In summary, underground sand filters are an excellent solution in urban environments to meet both water quality and quantity requirements. If you have a project where you think a sand filter would be a good fit, please reach out to your local storm trap territory manager. Well, thank you, Aaron. And thank you, Jeremy. Uh, great case studies. I, I always like to see uh, those. It really shows the different applications that we can be a part of really around the country. Um, so thank you again for doing it. Those main boys of Wicked Smart. Um, <laughs> couldn't help myself. Uh, so really, as we wrap it up and we go into talking about storm trap services and really what you can expect uh, when you interact with our territory managers or anyone at storm trap is we wanted to remind you that really storm traps territory managers that I just mentioned are the people to reach out to no matter which prod products that you're using that, that have been talked about today, whether from hydro or storm trap. So one of the one of the basic services that we provide that we're getting pulled into more and more is is really that front conceptual end and that can be anything from regulatory or uh, or municipal guidance uh really for for anything whether it's whether there it is those regulations or there's a municipality with a certain issue and being that we provide the full stormwater solution and have these expert tms around the nation we built a large network of municipalities owners engineers and contractors and really what this allows us to do is one be that expert resource you can turn into turn to but if we don't know we have that large network so we can put you in touch with somebody that's sitting in the same seat that you are um, so it's not necessarily just coming from us they can walk you through all of that and so because we have that network and that expertise we're commonly pulled into uh, helping these municipalities with things like regulatory development or funding mechanisms that go along with master planning or any of this. Uh, TMDL compliance, a lot what, what we talked about earlier, whether that's nutrient or trash, um, or, or more commonly, like Aaron was just talking about at the Whirligig project, that resiliency or flood mitigation system. So seeing a lot of the names that registered today, um, a lot of you aren't foreign to this, but we also help a lot during the design process and the budget process. Um, so really, no matter how conceptual the job is, come to us. It doesn't cost anything for us to really put a design and budget together for you. And with that, what we'll give you is a, a cost estimate, not only for our material, but really give you quantities and expected installation costs um, for, for everything that's in that pocket of excavation and backfill and that goes along with it. We can even introduce a, a contractor that has worked with us in the past that can give you something honed in for the entire site from time to time. With that, we'll give you a complete set of drawings specific to your site uh, and those CSI specifications that you can tuck right into your spec sheets. And we'll do that all in a fast turnaround. Doesn't stop there. Uh, we have project managers spread around the country as well. Uh, you heard Jeremy sort of mention that where where the the contractor on that casino project was able to work with one project manager. Uh, so what they do is really after we get the order and approval drawings back is they're going to take that and run with it and they're going to make sure everything's made correctly at, at the manufacturer and then they're going to work hand in hand with the contractor and that's that's really going to entail a pre construction meeting really so that they can plan for it, especially these new contractors to make sure they're comfortable but also set a shipping order uh, the reason the shipping order is important is they can take the pieces right off the truck and put them right where they're going to sit forever so what that does is reduces the the double touching of a piece and of course makes a more in efficient installation like Aaron talked about doing that big project of Whirligig in, in about six days uh, in addition to that they're going to be on site 
really to answer any questions, typically at least the first day. Um, but on these larger jobs, if the contractor needs it, we'll usually have someone out there as needed. And then uh, they're gonna manage that production lead time to make sure that it's on time to the site. And it doesn't end there. Uh, we also provide maintenance services and we can provide that direct to the customer, uh, the, the end user, and that can be inspection and maintenance. And it doesn't have to be a storm trap product. So if it's something like you see here where we're maintaining, uh, replacing nets and cleaning up the trash trap system, or maybe we're maintaining a sand filter or a hydro international filter, or even just an above ground pond, uh, we can really supply you any of these services as an end user or owner. And something I consider a service that we provide as well is, is a lot like we're doing today, this continual learning, right? So, so make sure you connect with us on social media. It's really going to help, help you see what's going on with Stormtrap. So, so follow us on LinkedIn uh, so it will show up in your feed. Connect with us on YouTube so you can see those videos Aaron mentioned. Uh, get to us on Facebook and Twitter so, so that you're constantly seeing this in the feed. And I myself, I like to do this with a lot of companies across our industries and other industries because it, it helps me see what people are doing to give me ideas for when I run into the next challenge that one of our customers has. So I encourage you to do that. And, and really that will tie into the, the next slide after this, but I did want to remind you the survey, right? Um, we sort of put that money right front and center to, to entice you, but but again, if if, if that doesn't entice you, it really helps us get better, which hopefully is going to make you better. It's going to make us a better resource for you, whether that's just knowing what you need education on with another webinar or something like innovating a new product that's going to help you meet your challenges and your customers' challenges. So with that, we've talked about these services, products, everything that we, we really have. So who do you get in touch with? Uh, knowing that uh, a lot of you know us keep continuing to talk to your tm for any of these products but if you don't know who that person is go right to our website if you go up to the contact it's going to take you to something that looks like a map in that map you'll see who's in charge of the different territories that's state by state and you just simply reach out to that person if for whatever reason you can't find that you'll see my contacts on the next page i know each and every one of our team members very well in their responsibilities and I can get you in touch with them uh, very quickly. But while you're on our webpage, I talked about the case studies, make sure that you also know you can go on there and you can input project design requests. So if you're TM, you don't know who to reach out, you can put it right on there and it will get to them that, that within an instant. And in addition to that, if you want more education on these products, uh, probably through a lunch and learn, you can request that right on the website as well. So I know we're coming up to the end here, um, but I, I wanted to thank you all for your time today. Everyone taking the time out to come listen to us speak to you about these filters. I wanted to thank Jeremy and Aaron. They put a tremendous amount of work into this, uh, do, did a great job with it, and we really appreciate it. But I really, I really want to take the time to, to, to recognize our marketing departments. Uh, the, the presentation you see here, go to our websites. It's all due to them. They do a tremendous job. So thank you to Stephanie and Tice here at at Stormtrap and Bridget at Hydro for really making us effective communicators. 